All right, so the new 10.2 inch iPad from 2019 now has smart keyboard support. It's got iPad OS. So how does it compare with the iPad Pro? Which one should you buy? Let's talk about it. What's up guys, so in this channel I make a bunch of content like this one, so if you're a fan of this type of content, consider subscribing. Alright, so the way that this video is going to work, I'm going to tell you what the difference is between the iPad Pro and the iPad, and then I'm just going to tell you my opinion on which one should you get, and depending on what you do and what you want to do on this iPad, I think you can officially have like kind of a conclusion and opinion on which one you should get. Alright, so previously the budget iPad never had a smart connector, which meant it could never be connected with a smart keyboard. But now we finally get a smart connector and we can now finally connect a keyboard with the Apple's most affordable iPad. And this is crazy. I remember, I said this on my unboxing, I remember the days when the iPad Pro was the only iPad that had Apple Pencil support and the keyboard. But now you get that experience with a $300 iPad, which is great. Both iPads do have Apple Pencil support. iPad Pro has the second generation Apple Pencil and the budget iPad has the first generation Apple Pencil. The second generation Apple Pencil has a cleaner design and it's got a double gesture support. So basically if you wanna write something and then you wanna erase, you simply double tap and then you pick the eraser. It's really cool. With this, you have to go to the app and click the eraser and then erase and then go back. With this, it's just like double tap, do, double tap, do. It's really great. I really like the Apple Pencil too. Is it a really, really big deal? No, but it's really nice to have. So let's talk about the design on both iPads because the iPad Pro is where the design really shines. You get an edge to edge display, you get no bezels. I mean, you get small bezels on the side, but like, you need bezels to hold the iPad. If not, you would literally be pressing the screen. On this iPad, I mean, the bezels are pretty big. Not really that big of a deal, but the user experience, you really notice it since it's just so freaking beautiful. You get Face ID on the iPad Pro. You will not get Touch ID compared to the budget iPad. So it's really nice to have Face ID because Face ID is just something that you don't really think about. Um, especially if you have a keyboard, you're literally just pressing and it will literally unlock by itself. With this iPad, you have to put the finger. Not that big of a deal, but it is a nice change. You also get ProMotion on the iPad Pro, which basically means that the iPad Pro's display refreshes a lot more. So you get this really fluid display, which is probably one of my favorite features on the iPad Pro. Whenever I go back to a normal iPad, I'm like, why is this lagging? And it's like, it's not lagging. It's just the iPad Pro's display is so much, incredibly, way much better. Storage is also another factor that you should definitely consider. On the iPad Pro, you can get up to one terabyte of storage compared to the budget iPad, which the maximum you can get is 128 gigs. So depending if you want a lot of storage, if you want more than 128, you will not get that on the budget iPad. So maybe an iPad Air or an iPad Mini is something, uh, another thing that you can also consider. But the iPad Pro can get up to one terabyte. That's 1000 gigs. That's a lot of storage. I don't wanna talk about specs in the camera, but the camera on the iPad Pro is definitely way much better than on the budget iPad. Now, why the heck, why the heck would you want a camera on the iPad? Well, to scan documents. I mean, if you, if for students, I personally scan documents all the time. So it's great to have a decent and a great camera. Um, because then you're gonna, you know, you know, you're gonna mark stuff and then you're gonna zoom and then you're gonna crop stuff. So having a good camera on an iPad is a big deal. On the budget iPad, it's not bad, but you can definitely notice the big difference on the iPad Pro. Speakers are also another factor that the iPad Pro really shines because on the iPad Pro, you get stereo speakers. You get speakers on the top and on the bottom of the device. On the iPad, on the budget iPad, you will not get speakers on the top and you will only get them on the bottom. So whenever you're listening to music, whenever you're playing videos, movies, whatever you do on your iPad, you will, with the budget iPad, sound will only come through here. With the iPad Pro, it's like a, an immersive experience, but this doesn't sound bad. It actually sounds quite and really good, but it's not immersive, you know? It sounds great, but it's not immersive. Let's talk about performance as well. On the budget iPad, you get an A10 chip. On the iPad Pro, you get an A12X chip. Basically, iPad is slower than the iPad Pro. But I'm gonna say this, you can do anything you want on the iPad, on the budget iPad, and it will perform exactly the same as in the iPad Pro. But of course, the iPad Pro will be so much faster. Um, I personally, for example, I graphic design, I use Affinity Designer, so sometimes I have a bunch of layers, so I really need that performance 
that my iPad Pro actually delivers. So I won't get this on this cheap iPad, but it all depends on what you wanna do on this iPad. I can recommend you the iPad Pro or the budget iPad. Let's talk about pricing now, because that's probably one of the most important things. How much is the iPad? How much is this guy? Well, the iPad starts at $300, which is a crazy good deal. And it's got a great value. I mean, this is probably Apple's most underrated product of the year because of how cheap this is. And it's still an iPad and an iPad is amazing. Whatever iPad it is, an iPad will be amazing. So the option to buy an iPad with Apple Pencil support, with a keyboard support, um, with iPad OS, which I'm gonna talk about that in just a second, that's a great value. The iPad Pro is really expensive. It comes in $500 more, so it will cost you $700, $800, or $900, depending on where you're from. So that's expensive. It's definitely worth it, and I'm gonna talk about who this iPad Pro is for and who this iPad is for in just a second as well. But pricing is a big deal. Cheap, expensive. Awesome and perfected, good. Depends on what you want. Let's talk about iPad OS now. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan on iPad OS. I've made so many iPad OS videos, which will of course be linked down below. Go and check them out. But iPad OS basically makes your iPad, it makes you have a desktop class experience with your iPad. And it's incredible that now, once again, with a $300 iPad, you can now get the same experience for 300 bucks. And this is incredible. With iPad OS, you get, for example, desktop class Safari. You, get, uh, you can now download stuff from Safari. You get dark mode. You get a redesigned home screen. You get so much stuff. I've made so many videos on iPadOS. If you guys want to check out what's new with iPadOS, check it out. Check out the videos down below. But it's just amazing. It's just so incredible that you, know, you can get it now on the iPad. Also, one last thing. Actually, I literally don't even have this written down. But the iPad Pro, I'm sorry, you guys are going to kill me. The iPad Pro has a laminated display and the iPad doesn't. And this is a big deal. A laminated display basically makes you feel that the display is right on the glass. With a non-laminated display like we see on the budget iPad, you really notice a gap between the actual glass and the actual display. If you still don't understand what a laminated display is, go to the Apple Store and see the difference. Just literally hold them like this and you'll see the difference. It's a really big deal. It's something that bothers me a lot, especially when I'm like designing and messing around with colors. It, it just bothers me. It's fine. Once again, I've used this iPad for like a week and a half now. I haven't, I barely touched on my iPad Pro and I notice it. It's not that big of a deal, but I mean, if you compare it to the iPad Pro, it's a really big deal. All right, so let's get down to the question. Which one should you buy? Should you buy the most expensive iPad Pro or is the $300 iPad enough for you? And it all depends on what you do. If you're a graphic designer, for example, I would say get an iPad Pro. If you mess around with like that you need the best display if you're a photographer and you want to edit photos or if you just you're not a photographer but you like editing photos and with a nice display, get the iPad Pro. If you like to game, this the cheap iPad will be enough, but if you can afford the iPad Pro, get it. Um if you're a student um and you want to buy an iPad. This is a hard one as well, but if you're like in middle school, elementary, get at the cheap iPad, I think it will be more than enough. If you're getting into high school and you want this iPad to replace your laptop, if you're going into college, I would definitely consider the iPad Pro. If you can't afford an iPad Pro, by the way, it's not really that big of a difference for students, for example. This iPad will be more than enough. But if you can afford an iPad Pro, I would definitely shoot for the iPad Pro. Um, if you just wanna watch basic media, like read books, um, to listen to music, this iPad will be more than enough. The $300 iPad will be more than enough. Um, by no means though, the iPad Pro is only for pros. I don't really consider myself a pro, but I still use the iPad Pro. I graphic design on this so much. I illustrate, I sketch. The iPad Pro has changed my life completely. I'm sure the iPad could change my life completely too. It's totally changed my workflow. So I mean, any iPad, you guys will absolutely love it but it all depends on what you do on your daily life. It's same like when people ask me, should I buy a MacBook or should I buy an iPad Pro? I made a video on that, check it out. Um, it's linked in the description, but it basically ended on the same note. I can tell you more or less who this iPad for, who this iPad is for and who this iPad is for, but every person is different and everybody has a different life and everybody needs a device for a different specific purpose. So first off, let me know in the comments down below. Um, if you're considering to buy an iPad, what do you do? 
If you're a student, what do you study? Let me know, I wanna know and I wanna help you out to purchase one of these two devices. So yeah, hopefully I helped you out with your purchasing decision. If I didn't help you out, that sucks for you.